Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys uh, swinging by the channel, spending some time with me watching the video. Always uh, very grateful for that. Guys, today I'm gonna show you how to rig a fluke the best way. Um, I think a lot of people think they know how to rig a fluke and uh, that's serviceable, but guys, I've got a way that's taken me probably 20 years to perfect. And if you rig it like this, the way I'm gonna show you, you're gonna get more action out of your fluke. It's gonna look more lifelike. Um, you're gonna get more bites on it. And also, and most importantly, you're gonna catch more fish that actually bite the thing because the fluke is notorious. You know, since it darts around a lot, it's, it's notorious for bass coming up and hitting it and missing it. And the way that I'm gonna show you is gonna really help those hookups um, today's video there. I'm also, guys, real quick for get started, I just wanna remind you about our spring sale going on with my Solar Bat Series uh, RB2, RB2 and RB3 Series Signature Series sunglasses by Solar Bat. Um, if you get a pair during the spring sale, you can get them at 25% off. And all purchases over $100, you get a $30 grab bag, a mystery grab bag from Solar Bat. So I'll put the Solar Bat link in the description uh, for my glasses if you guys would like to order a pair. And uh, try that Hikon Yellow, man. The Hikon Yellow lens is uh, my favorite. And also guys, I've had a lot of people ask, they do make prescription lenses. So if you guys need prescription, solar back can set you up there. So link in the description here. Okay guys, I'm going to show you, first of all, uh, we I've done some videos on this in the past, but um, as far as rigging it di in different ways like this, but I, I've never done it from start to finish as far as how I want to show you here and why it works so good. So let's first of all, let me show you how most people rig a fluke. Um, most people just take you know, just some type of an offset or EWG hook like this. And they come through the bottom of the fluke and they then they come back through and they're gonna bring it out through the back. I'll show you guys here how most people rig it. Um, I'd say the majority of people just rig it like this, just the EWG hook, you know, straight coming out the back there and they tie the fluke straight to the line like this. So first of all, guys, this is the worst way that you can rig a fluke like here. For whatever reason, when you rig a fluke like this, unless the fish are really eating it and super aggressive, you're gonna miss a ton of fish on there. A lot of times they come up and hit it short. A lot of times they hit it, they put it in their mouth and it, and it balls up here on the plastic and you lose them. Um, it's real hard to get the fluke to get the best action like this because a lot of times when you rig it like this, the fluke tends to want to pop out of the water and jump out of the water. You've probably seen it. And then tying it straight to the line, it's a line twist and mother. So stop doing it like this. So here's how you want to do it. Just try this and I promise you guys, once you try this, you're never, you're never going to go back to the way that was before. Get you a straight shank. This is a Gamagatsu uh, G Finesse uh, heavy cover worm hook. You want to get like, you know, I prefer something like a two or three yacht. And then uh, just a regular straight shank there. Then tie you about a 12 inch leader. And I'm usually using 12 to 15 pound test cigar in Visex fluorocarbon. And then you got a small barrel swivel here. The size of the swivel, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, this, I think this is a number four right here, but just some type of a small barrel swivel setup. Um, on the straight shank hook. This is the same setup I actually use for my floating worms. If you guys have seen some of my floating worm videos. So next thing you want to do is take your fluke. And this is what's really important here, guys, because the rigging on this thing, you've got to take your time and you've got to go real slow on it. You're going to be coming out the bottom instead of the top with the straight shank. So start out with the top here and come right through the, the middle of the bait. And the reason you have to come through the middle is the, the you know, you got this opening in the, in the fluke right here. So if you don't, you're gonna, you're gonna come through that open part of the plastic, but take your time and come right through the middle part of the fluke about probably, I'm gonna guess about, you know, inch and a half or two inches and bring that hook straight out the bottom like that. See, so there's the point of the hook. Gradually start it up. And then what you wanna do is you wanna leave it where there's a little bit of crook in the flute where you can actually see it here. It actually, it's not like perfectly straight. It, it's almost like it, there you go, there, oh, there's a better representation of it. The, the, you've got the point of the nose pointing down a little bit. So see, you've got the hook right here coming out the bottom and you've got the flute where it's not quite straight. It's a little bit, uh, you know, pointing down like that. Now, when you rig it like this, it's really important to rig it where you got the nose down on it because 
when you jerk that fluke, now it's gonna dart down in the water. And when you jerk it, it's gonna go like this. It's gonna go down like that, side to side. It's not ever gonna pop out of the water like that. And then your, flute, your uh, swivel here is gonna keep this thing from twisting. So you're also gonna get better action, completely eliminate the line twist, tremendous amount of darting action. Now the advantage to this is when these fish come up and hit it, is they've got the complete hook point exposed right there. They don't, you know, and what happens is when they hit it, you know, it releases a little bit, comes up, you get them perfect every time like that. So don't worry guys also about, if you're fishing around heavy cover, which I usually don't with the fluke, yeah, you may not be able to fit, like you're fishing it over grass or something, but 90, 99% of the time, I fish a fluke, I'm either fishing it around the edge of an object or I'm fishing around open water. So this is like a non-issue for that as far as having that exposed hook. And the, and the main thing guys is just work it like a subtle jerk bait. You know, just throw it out there, you know, let it sink a little bit depending upon the water clarity and then just jerk, jerk, pause. Jerk, jerk, pause. And sometime when you're pausing, you know, let that bait sink a little bit. And this is sort of the same on the floating worm is you know, your jerk, jerk, pause, let it sink a little bit. And then sometimes on your next jerk, speed it up and it goes up like that and jerks down. So just try to keep it sort of erratic action. And um, I, you know, ever since I've been rigging it like this, guys, I get more bites and I land a lot more fish. It's like, I, to be honest with you, I never really liked fishing flukes before the way when, you know, the, when, I, when I was rigging them like this, because like I said, I just got, a lot of bites on it that I never caught. I could never get the thing to run right. The thing would always jump out of the water. And ever since I tried that technique that I just explained to you guys, that flukes have become so much more productive and fun to fish. So anyway, guys, give it a try if you have it. Now is the time of year to fish it. Um, it's, you know, when you're talking about fluke fishing, you're not gonna find a better time than April. And also guys, I'll put my Tackle Warehouse link in the description. I'll link all of the components for the fluke here. If you guys wanna pick some up using that link, it's a good way to help the channel. So. Much appreciated. We'll talk later.